Hey guys, Bill here with Horror Made Simple, and today we're going to talk about a new type of drone hitting the scene. And specifically, that is going to be the new Manta drone developed by DARPA for the U.S. Navy. So real quick, just to give a little bit of background, DARPA is kind of the U.S. special agency where people go ahead and come up with crazy ideas. They don't really want to build tanks or planes or build guns. They want to build a gun that can shoot around 90 degree turns. They want to go ahead and build a tank that's a hovercraft and they want to build a ship that is capable of going 200 knots. They come up with all of our crazy ideas. And this time the crazy idea is an underwater drone. We've had underwater drones for a while. Um, the US Navy and private organizations have been using them for 20 odd years roughly on a large scale. There are other agencies that use drones before that, but in terms of autonomous, it's been roughly for the last 20 odd years we've seen them. These drones are normally meant to kind of scan and gather reconnaissance. They're not meant for combat, not really meant for anything other than a quick kind of scan the area and then just keep on moving. They're pre-programmed, they have a set course, set area, set maneuvering. The Manta drone looks like it might be a departure from those things. First off, it's much bigger than any of the former drones that we've used, including those in the United States Navy. It's around 20 feet in width and is Manta shaped, hence the name, instead of the normal torpedo shape we see from the majority of drones used in the other water world today. So we really don't know a whole lot about this drone, but I will tell you what we do know about it. Uh, first off, the thing is able to stay on the seafloor for an extended period of time, meaning that it can be deployed pretty much anywhere and stay in the area perpetually. The reason it's able to do this is because there's actually a power system for the drone that's built into it that can be deployed while it's operating. So it's able to generate its own power, no refueling, no restocking, no nothing. There is no fuel limitations on this machine. Additionally, there is a payload. The reason I say it in quotes is because we know that there is something that you can put in this device. We don't know really what you can fit in it. Based on its size, it could be a pretty substantial payload. And officially DARPA has said that it is scientific uh, matters that it will have payload wise. That's also usually DARPA talk for, we're gonna put a lot of things in here. We're not gonna tell you what they are. There's a fair chance that they can blow you up but we're not gonna tell you that just yet. We don't know if it can hold weapons. Based on its size, I say it could probably fit one 21 inch torpedo. Um, and if they're building specific munitions for it, it can fit potentially more. That's all speculation at this point. We don't know what it can do. Right now, the only thing we know it can confirm do is stay in one place for an extended period of time. And that's about it. That by itself is a huge leap forward over current underwater drone technologies, which usually have a pre-programmed route, go from point A to point B and then come back and don't do really anything else. These are meant to be sentries by the sound of things right now. This drone itself is not a game changer, but what follows it could be. What I mean by that is this is the first generation in a new type of underwater drone. It is potentially an armed underwater drone and additionally, it is a long-term use underwater drone. So if these things become armed, we can have these things potentially anywhere on planet Earth, and due to their nature, our opponents might not have any idea that they're there, or even our allies in some cases. The big concern with this is something that DARPA has been very vague about, and that is the production cost and the upkeep. If the production cost and upkeep is low enough, you could see nations start spamming these things out like crazy once the technology reaches the open market. This could be a huge game changer for naval warfare because up and until this point, submarines have mostly been limited by um, both their staying power and also by the fact that it's a lot to build and maintain a submarine. It's very expensive. You're basically building a spacecraft underwater for the most part. These, you don't have any of those issues inherent for normal submarines. You don't have power, you don't have fuel, you don't have all these different issues. The way that we hunt submarines today is one of three ways. Either one, we use a helicopter to drop a buoy and then direct a torpedo towards a submarine. You have a destroyer or another ship send out a signal, being sonar, locate the submarine and then attack it with torpedoes or missiles. Or you have a submarine on submarine combat with torpedoes. 
all three of these ways kind of rely on there being a low number of submarines because there's only so much that we can track using homing submarines, sorry, homing torpedoes rather, and homing missiles. If there is a lot of underwater targets, this could potentially be a hazard. Same issue you're seeing with drones. If you have a ton of surface drones operating in a swarm-based manner, it is very difficult for air um, radars to go ahead and track them and take them down. Same thing with submarines, except the problem additionally is you can't see them. Underwater, you at most have 120 feet of visibility on a good day. So you're not able to shoot bullets at these things coming towards you like you would be with any of these air-based drones. So this could potentially be a massive shift in naval warfare, but it's just too early to figure that out right now. The Manta drone, we're probably gonna find out more as the technology starts entering common practice and as DARPA is conducting more tests. I don't think that the Manta drone itself is going to be the platform that we see used in the US Navy. I think it's the next iteration of that platform that's going to be the thing that kind of redefines um, all of underwater combat in the near future. So that being said, Mondays is going to be a military day from now on. So basically, anytime you see a video on Monday, it's going to be on a military topic. Friday is going to be a news topic. Wednesdays, for right now, is just going to be kind of anything I'm throwing in there. But with that kind of update out of the way, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.